Hey guys, so my wife wanted me to do a little video on um, doing solar, solar power stuff. Uh, I'm in her greenhouse and we have some solar, let me move some of this stuff out of the way, some 12, uh, 12 volt fans, got two of them there, two of them over there, got a little uh, thermostat, uh, and I don't know if you can see up through the top there, there's two 10 watt solar panels that are wired in parallel so that I can, they're 12, so I got 12 volts, basically 20 watts. And um, I'm gonna go over some of the things you need. The only problem is with this setup, uh, I, these fans aren't currently running on the solar. Um, they're actually running off of a 12 volt power source that I've wired uh, into the uh, greenhouse. And then I have some of these LED lights and little little chandelier she has in here with some 12 volt lights. These are very low wattage, four watts, low amperage. This is only 0.4 or 0.5 amps each light. So I've got eight of them wired up going across here. And she can, all she has to do is just turn one on that she needs, know how much light she needs. And then over here, I have a switch for the little chandelier right there. And that just lights the chandelier up. But I'm gonna go over the solar, uh, doing solar power, because I've got a couple things in the yard that I've hooked up that are solar powered that uh and i'll show you how i've got it set up and it'll give you an idea if you want to do something like this because this is allows you this allows you to have things um running during the day or at night on solar power and you don't have to have any wiring going to it yeah it's pretty chilly out here right now so apologize if the camera's shaking a little bit i didn't wear a jacket when i came out my wife's going to have me for lunch for that but <laughs> but um the other thing she's got in this greenhouse is this door actuator so no power is needed for this this is actually ran by beeswax so when the um greenhouse starts getting above 65 degrees the beeswax starts to melt and then starts to push the door open. As the greenhouse starts to cool, the, the beeswax starts to harden, coagulate, and it pulls it back closed. So it's a pretty cool door. I didn't have to put no power into that thing. But these fans do pump out a lot of air as small as they are. Uh, there's a debate on whether I should add maybe one more up there, but we'll see uh, when the springtime comes of course, it's not going to be able to hold off once it starts getting over 90, 100 degrees here in Oklahoma. But uh, it does a pretty good job already. So here's the 12-volt, 150-watt power supply, 3.4 amps. Um, actually, puts out 12.5 amps, actually. It's 3.4 in uh, that it's drawing. And that supplies everything going into the greenhouse for 12-volt, low voltage. So, there's a few things you're gonna need. Number one, you're gonna need a solar panel. There's the panel for the greenhouse. And you're also gonna need a battery pack if you wanna do a, like a yard ornament at night and you need a solar controller. And I'll show you how that's set up. All right, so here is a, what do you call, walk, don't walk sign that my wife got an estate sale. And she wants it to light up at night in uh in the backyard so i've mounted this pole so i took the top off of this fence post and then i bought some galvanized steel pipe drove it down to put a screw in it to hold it and uh just this this cap here was taken off and then i was able to go ahead and put it in there and that holds it nice and tight and then i got it mounted to the pole if you see on top there's a solar panel, and if I open these up, open, take these screws off. I took the um, wiring, I removed all the wiring from the inside. I have to be careful with this because it has a glass 
um, has a glass cover. So I have to bring this down. I want this glass to fall out. Okay, so there, there's what I have on the inside. Here's my solar controller. As you can see, it's got 11.4 volts right now that it's taking in from the sun. And once it gets down to 10 volts, it shuts off. So when the sun starts going down, that's what this one's designed for, because this is designed to come on, have the lights come on at night. So when it gets down below 10 volts, the controller stops taking in voltage from the solar panels and switches on the battery. So there's the battery pack down here, and it has an on off switch over here. I can turn it off if I want to. And if I look up here, I've got no voltage coming in at all because the controller senses where the power, if there's nothing to charge, it doesn't allow any voltage from the solar panel. So I turn this back on and now the lights came on because the voltage is dropping. So this is, like I said, this is designed if you want something at night. So what I do is I have the power coming in from the solar panel going into one side of the controller which it goes right here that's that's the solar panel you see right there that's the battery right here and then this is your actual load the lights and these are low wattage led bulbs that uh it'll stay on you can see right now so it's putting out 11 points so so is the solar panel still taking in some power but it's also um, putting out to the load. So until the, once the voltage drops below 10 volts, then the solar panel, the controller stops taking power from the solar panel. And then the battery will run until it's dead. Uh, I, think, I think it'll drop to 10 volts once it's putting out 10 volts and then it disconnects. You don't want a lithium, I think it's a, I think it might be a lithium battery. Yeah, lithium ion. Once it drops below 10 volts, it stops putting out, because you don't want a lithium ion going all the way down to nothing. So if I put this back up, you see, it says walk, don't walk. Okay, so that's what it looks like when it comes on. As you can see, I got a stoplight over there. I've rewired that with solar. It's not on yet, because it's a little bit more out here in the light, and it hasn't dropped enough for, uh, for the battery to kick on. And there's another walk, don't walk sign over there. So these are configured. So if you want something to come on at night, kind of like a dust to dawn type thing, you could put a larger battery in there and have it stay on all night. And, and if it does, as soon as the sun comes up and the controller recognizes power coming from the sun, it automatically switches off the battery, ceases power to the load, and then just charges the battery. There's another controller that you can get that keeps power going the whole time. So a quick note on this. I can configure this to a specific voltage, and I can configure it for the dust of dawn, or I can configure it to literally stay on all the time. As soon as the solar panels kick in and they get high enough to, to supply voltage, 12 volts or whatever I'm, whatever the load is, up to 12 volts. I think this is 12, up to 14 volts, I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 12 to 24 volts. So it'll take up to 10 amps and I think max PV voltage is 50 volts. So it will keep everything on. If you have enough solar panels to supply all the voltage you need, you can configure this to just stay on. And then you have to have enough batteries to charge, keep everything on, and enough amperage to charge your batteries, enough to fill your batteries so that they could uh, let everything run overnight. 
So it depends on how, what you want set up. If I wanted this to run those fans, I would have to configure a battery source for it. And then it would run the fans through the um, thermostat that I have configured in the greenhouse. But the problem I had was that the thermostat, the solar panels didn't put out a, cl a clean enough power and the thermostat just kept clicking on and off. So that's why I went ahead and just wired it right to the 12 volts coming off of that power supply that's it's live all the time. That actually helps that I don't have to worry about a battery and it's low voltage and uh, it can they, they can come on anytime they need to. So that's about it with the uh, solar power, low voltage, 12 volt for the greenhouse and any other yard art that you want to put up and you want to light up your yard in the middle of the night. If you want to do it with your uh, landscaping lighting, you can. You just need to make sure that you keep track of the amperage being pulled by whatever you're lighting up and make sure that the battery you're using can support that much amperage for whatever time you want it. If you only want it for four hours, then you need to make sure you get a battery that will support the four hours of time for all the lights that you want to light up. Since those little um, yard things only have two bulbs and I think they're four watts each in there, I have it set for four hours and they pretty much stay lit the whole time. The, this little battery pack, this tiny little battery pack supports the four hours that those lights stay on. And I, I have them come on, it comes on as soon as it hits dark. So you don't have to set a time that it hits dark. But this controller, if you do a dust to dawn type of thing, you can set how many hours you want it to stay on. All this stuff is available on Amazon. You can just look up solar, solar charge controller. And then small 12 volt battery pack. And then you can find the... Um, solar panels and the solar panels come pre-wired and they have this little connector on it with this little pigtail so you can wire it right into the charge controller and you just plug it into the solar panel the only thing you would have to do just like i did would be to create some kind of bracket to mount it on whatever you're doing whatever project you're doing so if you have any questions hit me up and uh like and subscribe thank you talk to you later